Well, you guys asked for it, and I'm gonna give it to you. I read the comments, and we'll give you a take on most of the EV related stocks you guys asked about in my previous video covering multiple EV players. There were just too many to cover them all in one video, I'm sorry, but I'll try to cover most of them. But don't worry, I'm not going to make this a 30 minute video despite the fact I spent hours looking all this stuff up. I respect your time and honestly, nobody wants a video that long for me. So make sure you like the video and subscribe to this channel if you like the truth without the hype. And don't forget to get your completely free download, My Stock Investing Checklist to help you out. And check out the Market Insiders private group while you're there where I have posted 68 buys now over 19 stocks, plus four free courses, live weekly Q&As, exclusive videos, and a ton more. So make sure you check out the pinned comment down below. And before blasting me for promoting it, I have no ads, no sponsors. This is what YouTube pays me in a month, and I give half of that and half the group's proceeds to charity. All right, so check out my original video right up here if you're interested in my take on some of the bigger EV players. But I literally pulled up all 404 comments at the time of filming this video and made a list of each stock you guys asked about. And if I missed yours right now, I'm sorry, I finally went cross-eyed looking at them all. Now remember, you constantly have to reassess all the stocks that you're looking at. So just because I don't like a stock now doesn't mean it won't be successful in the future or that I won't actually buy that stock in the future. And a stock that is speculative right now may be a growth stock in the future and eventually a huge player in EV land. So here we go in no particular order. And the first stock would be Canoe. Like most stocks on this list, they got caught up in the ridiculous hype at the end of last year and the beginning of this year with all the EVs. So with almost all these, looking how far off they are from their all-time highs is a useless exercise because that is not a true indication of what they are worth. That's also why I preach doing valuations so much on this channel. It's the only way to truly get a real feel for where a stock is actually at. Now with Canoe, I like the products, what's coming, and their share price actually isn't too bad right now. They also have a cash position large enough to survive anything that may go on over the next year. Now, I'm not really a fan of them maybe getting into a meme style run since I actually am a buy and hold investor and that sort of stuff kind of makes it really, really hard on a buy and hold investor. But the risk reward proposition with this stock is much better than it was just a few months ago. Next up, we have Polestar and they are exciting. They look great, but like many on this list, is there enough total addressable market to go after? And what I mean by that is this, they have stated their mission is to go after the Porsche crowd. That's a very niche crowd and a very dedicated crowd. And I know I'm probably saying Porsche wrong too, I'm sorry. Porsche also has a very unique driving experience that must be experienced to actually understand. And I've actually driven several exotic cars, including a Porsche, and I can say that it's just different and a wonderful car to drive. So this one is clearly in the wait and see category for me. Moving on to ChargePoint and Blink. Both of these stocks should see significant revenue growth in the coming years, but I'm actually not a fan of the margins in the charging sector. And with Tesla as a competitor and Tesla's ability so far to innovate and just do everything better than everybody else, I'm not sure how these will turn out in the long run. But the good news is ChargePoint and Blink are not speculative and they're clearly in the growth stage. I'm just not sure how profitable they will be in the long term. Next up, we have Fisker. And who here remembers Fisker the first time around? I know I sure do. I actually looked at one and I looked at Tesla as well at the time. The Fisker was nicer and slick looking at the time compared to Tesla. And I'm sorry, Tesla fans, don't blast me. That's just the truth. You guys know I don't lie here. But they were quickly out of money and completely out of business. Have they learned a lesson from the first time around? I mean, who really knows at this stage? So to me, they are purely speculative at this time. So moving on to a truly unique entry, and that would be Akramoto. And I know, I probably said that one wrong too. It's just kind of the way it goes on this channel. I actually like the company. I like the product. It's just actually really cool. I just don't think it has a TAM large enough to justify a larger market cap than where it's already at. And unlike cars, the barrier to entry is very low for competitors in this space if they do happen to take off. So that's something that you have to consider. And now on to Hylion, which is actually my favorite out of the EV SPAC mania that happened last year. Now to be clear and upfront, I sold out of my shares at $50 because it was not worth that even though I love the stock. And unfortunately the contracts just have not followed like they were projecting when they launched and what they said was going to happen. So I have stayed away from the stock since then and if those contracts can pick up, maybe there is more there, but for now the revenue path to a lot of growth is just not there in my opinion. Now let's take a peek at BYD and this is the Chinese automaker that Warren Buffett owns or not owns, but he owns stock in BYD. I like them. They are firmly past the speculative stage and well into the growth stage. 
Revenues look great and the future revenues look great as well and it's not crazy overpriced. But it is a Chinese stock so it has the same limitations as Li or Neo or Xpong or any of those. So make sure you consider all those risks and understand all those risks intimately before investing. So next up is Rivian, which may be the most intriguing of the bunch for me due to them being backed by Amazon. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna be the same success as Amazon is or anything else like that, but Amazon has proven they can successfully jump into new categories and they have mountains of cash if needed by Rivian. How much crossover they have is still to be seen, but it still makes me a little bit intrigued by it. But this will be an IPO that launches soon, and my guess is there will be a lot of hype that will run it up and then it will come down and finally settle. I seriously don't even usually look at IPOs until after a couple of quarters. So I'm intrigued, but taking a wait and see approach for now with this stock. And the final stock I'm gonna cover today that you guys asked for was Ford and GM. Now look, whether we like it or not, they do have a couple things going for them. One, they have a loyal customer base of customers. Loyal customer base of customers. Eh, I don't know, you guys know what I'm saying. Yes, those have eroded away over the years, but when compared to a lot of these startups that we're talking about, their base is massive in comparison. And number two, they will be given every chance to succeed by the US government. Their ties are just too deep for them not to be a player in the EV space. Now I'm not saying they will dominate or be the best or anything else like that but they absolutely will be a player. Now, as far as the stock goes, the balance sheets are just ugly and riddled with potholes that you cannot fix even with crazy revenue gains. So I honestly have no interest at this time in owning them. Hopefully I got most of the stocks that you guys wanted to see and I know I didn't get them all. So comment down below and let me know the ones that I missed. So now I'm off to take a nap because I cannot look at another EV stock. So thank you very much for watching my friends. Until the next time, I'll see you then.